And welcome back to Lee's Stuff, where I talk about issues regarding uh, your computer or problems you may be having. Today we're going to talk about Outlook 2010 data files and how to repair them. Uh, Outlook 2010 still has a lot of bugs in it, uh, and it's it crashes kind of regularly, and I get this complaint from clients a lot. Uh, they want to know why and they want to see what's going on, but uh, unfortunately, unless you kind of know how to navigate through the tools, uh, you're really not going to find any easy way to repair it. And you may even find that uh, the program will just simply not run. It'll hang, it'll crash, you go to run it again and it won't come up. And uh, that's kind of a common occurrence. I see that quite a bit. Now I'm running Windows 7 64-bit, although this is not unique to 64-bit, it happens in 32-bit as well. Uh, so I've got my Windows Task Manager open right now. And the way you get to that, by the way, is uh, right-click on the taskbar at the bottom of your screen, anywhere in a blank area, and click on Start Task Manager, and it'll pop this window up for you. Uh, and you'll notice there are three things, three items here on the screen. Uh, the DW20.exe, and you'll notice if you look all the way over to the right, you'll see it's the Microsoft Application Error Reporting. What's happening here is, is that something has crashed, and it hasn't properly closed down after the uh, the crash and so it's leaving this error reporting program running and uh, that's kind of a, a clue that there's something happening that's hanging quite a bit so I'm gonna go ahead and kill these uh, just because uh, they, they really don't need to be here right now and they will restart if there is a crash that's something normal to uh, to Windows so I'm gonna close those out so they're gone but the reason that I actually brought you in here is to make sure that if you have, for example, an issue where you can't start Outlook again, uh, you want to, and, and a lot of times you're forced to reboot to make that happen, uh, one of the things you might want to do is come in here and look uh, under the Processes tab, and you want to be in this Processes tab here, and you also want to be clicked on the image name so that you're sorting from A to Z. And you can tell that because this little arrow here is pointing upwards. If it's pointing downwards, you're sorting Z to A. If you you go upwards, you're sorting A to Z. So once you're sorting A to Z, uh, you can actually scroll down here and you want to go to the O's and make sure that you don't see Outlook running here. If you see Outlook.exe running here and it's not in your taskbar and it's not showing up anywhere else, uh, then obviously it hasn't shut itself down properly and sometimes you might even see more than one. So what you're going to want to do is kill that, and you do it basically the same way that I just did uh, the other uh, program. Now, before you kill anything, I should always warn everybody, every single time you go to make a change to your system or you do something like this, run a backup. Be safe, run a backup. And I, I show you in one of my other videos, and I'll throw a little annotation link down to it here. Uh, to show you how to actually uh, run a, a really, really good image backup of your drive very easily. So do that first, please, just to be safe. Anyway, with that said, uh, what you would do if you saw the Outlook.exe uh, uh, program here, you would right-click on it. I'm just going to pick one of these programs here. It, it, this is not the one you would be shutting down. Obviously, you'd shut down Outlook. But this is what the, the menu would look like, and you would click End Process. And when you click End Process, then that will kill the program, and it'll actually ask you if you want to, to kill it. It'll ask you if you want to end it here, and you just say End Process. So once you've done that, and you have no Outlook 30 or Outlook uh, uh, EXE programs running here, processes running here, uh, then you know that you can go to the next step. Because if you don't, you will not be able to get to the next step. So the next step is really to run a program that is actually built into the uh, the installation of Outlook uh, and Outlook actually provides it as a tool but they don't really document it too much. Uh, it is there but they don't really document it very well and probably because they don't want people to abuse it. But uh, here it is, it's this program here called scanpst.exe and it, uh, it just is in this office directory and you can see there's the, the path to it right there and the x86 you're seeing is because I'm running a 64-bit version of Windows but it's installed as a 32-bit version of Office so it puts it in this x86 program files directory so uh, but yours if, if it's a 64-bit version of, of Outlook you will have it in the program files directory by itself at any rate uh, you'll find it in here under program files Microsoft Office Office 14. That's where you're going to locate it. Now, I actually have this pinned 
to my start menu you can see right here it's it's pinned so I'd have to unpin it I use it because it does happen quite a bit it's uh, really an issue and and uh, so I keep it handy to, to be able to run it so then what do you actually run it on well Outlook creates several data files and I've I've gone ahead and pulled up another window here and uh, this window is is where we're gonna find the files for Outlook their data files and you have to be careful here don't randomly delete things don't go in and, and change things around this is something that uh, is managed by office and so you don't want to mess with it too much but in this case we're going to try to locate the files that we're going to correct or we're going to repair and the way you do that is you go into your C drive scroll down to uh, users because everything's stored under a user you're going to go in this case to my my I'm gonna to go to Lee to my user uh, that I'm logged in as now but you'll notice that the the directory that we need to go into next which is app data is hidden so if you want to actually see this you're going to have to make a change to the way that your folder view is listed and the way you do that is you go to tools folder options view okay and you'll notice there's hidden files and folders here as an option you can either show them or you can hide them now I've selected to show them because I want to be able to get to some of these files. You may want to do that temporarily and then come back and turn this off or you can leave it open but just be careful because hidden files are usually hidden for a reason so be careful about what you're doing here. But in this case in order to get to this app data directory you're going to have to show hidden files and folders otherwise you will not see that. Okay, So we'll go ahead and cancel that and close it. So we've gone to C users and then the username in this case leave for me we'll go into app data local and I'll scroll down to Microsoft Microsoft and then scroll down to Outlook there's Outlook so now you can see there's a lot of different files in here and many of them have to do with the different uh, email addresses the test email addresses and stuff that I've got that I I run and uh, the one that is for the file that I'm actually gonna correct today is an OST file which happens to be for a uh, Gmail account but there's also other files in here uh, for other email addresses that I use as a test that I just kind of run as a test and, and the reason it's hopping around here is because it's actually making changes to it as we speak to the directory as we speak but uh, some of them are PST files others are OST files and then you'll see the NST files the NST files are for notes and so obviously there's a lot of different options in here but what you're going to do is look for the one that actually works with your particular account that you're trying to deal with now there's a main one a main outlook PST file which actually you'll see that's pretty large that actually holds a lot of information about virtually all of the settings within outlook so if that file in itself is corrupted you'll see all kinds of weird things happen as well but I'm gonna correct this OST file today so that's the one I'm gonna try to open so let's go back here and let's run scan PST actually I think I have it running you double click it and it would come up and it says Microsoft Outlook inbox repair tool so what you need to do is remember which file it is that you're looking for here and where it's located you can always click up here in this this toolbar and it'll show you the actual path you can even copy that and paste it if you want to and you'll select browse here bring this up so you can see it and it just happens that it's going directly there right now it's going to that directory right now so I'm gonna go ahead and click on this file and say open and it'll take it a second because it loads all the data from it into its uh, program there it is now it popped up and you'll say start now you'll watch it'll run through these different phases sometimes it takes a while sometimes it happens really quickly and of course it pops up and says errors were found in this file now you would think it would tell you what errors there are and maybe give you a clue about what it is that's broken uh, if you click on details right well let's click on details and it says ah, internal errors were found they must be repaired in other words it's not going to tell you anything about it it does create a log file which will tell you about it and there's the log file right there but each time you run this it overwrites that log file so you never know if especially if you have to run this more than once which I'm going to do it will overwrite that log file so if you want to know what's in there make sure you look at the log file right after you've run the repair uh, it also asks you if you want to make a backup of the scan file before repairing I always do just because it's just you know practice and if one already exists when you click on repair it'll pop up and say 
one already exists you want to continue any, anyway, and I do. So I'm going to go ahead and let it do that. And it just kind of sits and spins here for a minute, and then it'll come back up and tell you that the repair is complete. So now you think everything's wonderful and it's working fine and there aren't any problems. Well, let's try that again, shall we? Let's go back in. Let's grab the OST file one more time. You see that log was created. We'll say open. It'll think about it for a moment and then it'll pop up in here showing that it's there. There it is. And then we'll click start again and we'll let it run through its check. And I bet you it's going to come up and say there are errors still. Yep, it did. So we're going to go ahead and repair it one more time and say yes. Go ahead and overwrite the old backup. And it says repair complete. Now just to be thorough, I'm going to run it one more time because I know better. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and load that OST file back in again. And I'm going to let it, there it goes. Let it start. Run it through and we're probably good now. No errors were found in the file. So there you go. So just so you know, you probably are going to have to run this, this program at least twice, maybe three times. And I'm going to go ahead and run it actually on the main Outlook data file, which is this one here, the Outlook.pst file. I'm going to run it on that one just to be sure that we don't have any errors in the main Outlook file itself. I want to make sure that it's running well. And let's see what it comes up with. Uh, yeah, only minor inconsistencies. That's not unusual. So we'll go ahead and tell it to repair it. And yes, the backup file already existed. So there it says it's complete. I'm going to run it one more time just to be 100% sure. And where's my PST? There it is. And we'll click on start once it loads. There we go. And... Oh, now it says errors were found. So again, this is why you have to run this sometimes several times to actually get it to work all the way through and fix all of the issues in your file. So don't be afraid to run it several times and make sure that you come up with it to saying that there were no errors found in the file. And that technically, kind of the faster it checks itself, it, the, the more likely it is there aren't any errors. So there we go. No errors found in the file. So now, theoretically, we are good to go. So that's it in a nutshell. I know this is a long video, but you really need to know how to repair these files and to keep them clean because once they get thoroughly corrupted, there's kind of nothing you can do about it. You got to start over. So I always, once I start noticing that Outlook is crashing a lot or it's being sluggish or it won't start right or something's happening, that rather than just reboot and, and start over, I go ahead and use this scan.pst program just to make sure. So there's how you repair your Outlook data files. Uh, sorry for taking so long, but I want to make sure I'm thorough. You can always zip back and forth in this, this program or pause or zoom ahead. So uh, hopefully this helped you out. And as usual, if you have any questions or any comments, uh, any suggestions for new videos, please post them on the channel. I'd be happy to see them. Take care. Enjoy.